Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and this is C++ from Scratch. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about virtual functions. So in our previous video, we looked at the basics of polymorphism. And in that, in that example, we saw how we could reinterpret some derived class to look like a base class using a reference. Now, that was an example of what we call static polymorphism, where all of the information about the types of our objects um, were known by our compiler at compilation time. But our compiler doesn't know everything about what happens at runtime. So we can be left in a situation in our code where we have, say, a pointer or a reference to some uh, base class type, and we don't know what the underlying uh, derived class type is. We might have some object that's been upcasted. However, we still want, say, the behavior of that underlying derived class type uh, in these situations. So for example, you know, we often do this upcasting just so we can group objects um, that inherit from the same base class uh, together. But we still want those objects to behave like themselves, to behave like their underlying derived class type. And the way that we get this in C++ is through virtual functions. So on the right-hand side of the screen here, I have the CPP reference page up for the, our virtual function specifier. So this virtual keyword. And there's a great explanation about um, what exactly these virtual functions are and what they do. So if we go ahead and read this, we see that virtual functions are just member functions whose behavior can be overridden in derived classes. And that opposed to non-virtual functions, the overriding behavior is preserved even if there is no compile time information about the actual type of the class. So what this really means is that, you know, if we have some derived class that's been upcasted and we have, say, a pointer or reference to a base class, if we call some overridden virtual function, right, using that pointer or reference, we would still invoke the behavior of the derived class. And this is something that we call a virtual function call or a virtual call. So it's saying that even if we've upcasted, right, some object to the base class type, we're still going to get the behavior of the derived type or the derived class when we call our overriding uh, member functions. Okay, so let's go ahead and, you know, open up our simple example here and see how we can use these virtual functions and this virtual function specifier. So we'll open up virtual functions on CPP and we see a lot of our code from last time. So we have, you know, a few simple structs to find. So some base class animal that implements some speak method and then a few derived classes. So our struct dog that inherits from animal but overrides uh, speak um, and then our struct cat um, that, you know, inherits from animal and then overrides or uh, overloads the speak uh, member function here. Now inside of our main function, um, we just create an object of type dog and cat, and we call speak for both of those objects. So we should see woof and uh, meow for dog and cat respectively. And then over here, we have our example of static polymorphism. So we reinterpret our dog um, through this reference to an animal, and then we reinterpret our cat through a reference to an animal. And we call speak uh, for both of these references. And what we saw was that we get this call to, um, or this printout of default speak function for these reinterpreted objects here. So if we go ahead and uh, you know, minimize this and uh, compile our virtual functions.cpp and call our output executable uh, just virtual functions and run it, we see that of course we got you know woof and meow for our dog object and our cat object. But when we did that upcasting to our base class, we got default speak function, right, for both of our, uh, both our dog object and our cat object. So underneath the hood, right, with this reference, we still have a dog object and we still have a cat object, but now it was behaving like our base class here. Now, if we don't want that to happen, we can make our speak uh, member function a uh, virtual function. And we do that using the virtual keyword like we saw on the right-hand side of the page. So here, um, before void, we can go ahead and declare this function uh, to be virtual. Now, how exactly does this change our behavior? So like we said down here, it says that, you know, uh, you know, when we have, say, a pointer or a reference to some base class and we call some overridden virtual function, we would invoke the behavior de uh, defined in the derived class here. So even though down here I'm reinterpreting, say, a dog to be an animal 
or cat to be an animal, this is saying that because I'm using a virtual function now, I'm still going to get the behavior of dog and cat here. So when I call a1.speak, I'm going to get the speak method from dog. Likewise, when I do a2.speak, I'm going to get the speak method for cat. So I'm still going to get the behavior of the derived classes. So let's go ahead and save this and let's go ahead and recompile our program now that we've added this virtual function specifier. And we can run this. And what we see is we get woof and meow and woof and meow. So from our dog object, we get woof. From our cat object, we get meow. From our reference to animal, um, for our dog object, we get woof. And for our reference to animal, for our cat object, we get meow. So we still got the behavior of those underlying derived classes, even though we were reinterpreting them as our base class or we were upcasting them. Now, a good question to ask here is how exactly is this going on underneath the hood, right? And how does this typically occur? Well, a lot of these decisions about which function to call, um, they now have to occur at runtime. So at runtime, right, when we're reinterpreting, say, uh, some derived class to look like a base class and we call some function, we have to look up exactly which function should we call. Should we call speak for animal? Uh, should we call speak for dog? Or should we call speak for cat? So there sometimes can be some overhead related to these virtual function calls, right? But we'll probably talk about that in later videos um, as a more advanced topic. Now, there's a good practice here that we can do with our virtual functions, and that relates to another keyword we have in the language since C++11, and that's going to be this override specifier. And that's uh, a simple specifier that says that, um, you know, some you know, function that we have um, overrides another virtual function here. So let's go ahead and see how we can do that or use this. So for example, right after speak here, right, because speak is overriding this virtual function from our base class speak, we can write override, right? And we can do the exact same thing for cat here. We can write override. Now, this doesn't really do anything to change what speak does, you know, whatsoever but it's a great way to prevent errors inside of our code. So what this does is it tells our compiler to expect speak to override something from our base class. So it makes it so that we can't make a mistake, right, when we're creating the speak method. So for example, if I do something like accidentally uh, misspell speak here, so now it's, you know, I've, I've written SPAC instead, I forgot the E, and I try to save this, my compiler's gonna yell at me. So you can see it says that void dog spec marked as override, but it's not overriding anything. It's saying that, hey, you said you were going to be overriding some member function here, some virtual function from your base class, but there's no virtual function called spec inside of the base class. So that's going to be an error, right? So if we go ahead and try to recompile this application, it ends up failing, right, with that exact same error that we saw. Now, if we didn't have this override method, this would actually be perfectly okay, right? This error could go through completely silently here because all this looks like to the compiler is that we defined a new member function here. Our compiler just sees, oh, you wanted to create a member function called spec inside of your um, derived class dog here. So later on when we, you know, call, you know, d.speak here, we're just gonna be using the, you know, member function of our base class here, right? And we're not going to be using this spec uh, uh, member function whatsoever. So we go and compile this, and you can see that now we get some weird behavior here that we weren't nece necessarily intending as programmers. Now all of our dog uh, speak calls uh, print out this default speak function, and it's because we have this typo in here of spec. And this could all be prevented, by using this keyword override. That's just telling our compiler, hey, this is supposed to be, supposed to be overriding some, uh, some virtual function in say a base class. So it helps us catch these silly kind of errors. So it's good practice to use. Okay, so that's gonna go ahead and do it for today. It's got a brief introduction to our uh, virtual functions and also this override specifier. As always, you can find this and any of the other examples at github.com slash coffee before arch. 
But that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.